Hi, it's Rob from Zedings, and today I'm going to talk you through how the settings screen works in Zedings. This is all about configuring exactly the way your Zeding works so that you can get it suited to your particular use case. So as you can see, I'm in a Zeding right now, and I'm going to go ahead and click Settings. This is the settings screen. There are a whole bunch of options to allow you to configure your Zeding. I'm going to work through each one carefully so that you understand exactly what it does. Firstly, you'll see there are three sections, General, Access, and Preferences down the bottom. The General section is straightforward. It simply shows the maximum number of participants that you can have in your Zeding at any one time. For me, that number is 500. This number is determined by the plan you're on. So if you want to increase the capacity of your Zedings, simply upgrade to a greater plan. And if you want to decrease the capacity, you can downgrade to a lower plan. You can move between plans from your profile screen. Next up is access. So this controls who can participate in your Zeding and what information they need to provide in order to participate. First up is a public and private setting. And this is all about controlling who accesses your Zeding when you're not presenting. If it's public, anyone with your Zeding link can access it. They don't need a Zedings account and they don't need to sign in. If it's private, only people you personally invite can access it. They do need to create a Zedings account and be signed in in order for us to validate that they are who you invited. In order to invite people, you simply head over to your share screen and send them an email. Let's do that now. So you can see I've got the, the Zeding link up the top. If it was public, all I need to do is share that link with people. Or if it's private, I need to actually invite them via the, the widget in the, middle, in the middle of the screen. All right, let's jump back into settings. The next thing you'll see is there's the option to ask participants for certain information before they join. You can ask for an access code, their name, and their email address. Effectively, how this works is that before they join your presentation, whether you're presenting live or you're just sharing it with them, a little box will pop up and it will ask them for the information you require. If you ask for an access code, you can set it to anything you like. Asking for their name and email is also really cool because what that allows is that you can track exactly how that person participated on an individual basis. So, for example, you can see exactly how that person voted in polls and what questions or comments they posted. All that information will appear in your anal analytics dashboard. If you don't ask for their name and email, they'll simply be anonymous. You still get their poll results and their votes and questions and comments, but it will all be anonymized. Let's turn off the access code for now. The next section is preferences, and you'll see here there are a bunch of subsections which um, deal with the various functionality of Zedings. Firstly is polls. This allows you to reset polls each time you present, and it's on by default. Why this is useful is you may want to do a test presentation before the real thing and not want the results to be reflected on the screen when you bring the group together. You may also present your Zeding to multiple groups and you don't want the results from one group to bias another. Something to keep in mind is that even if you reset the results with each new presentation, all the aggregate results will still be available to you in your analytics section. So nothing is lost. All the information is permanently stored. Before we look at the next few subsections, it's important to know exactly what a Zeding looks like from a participant perspective. So let's open that up now. What I have here is the participant view of a Zeding on a mobile phone. There's the content section, which we're in now, which is where your slides, polls, videos, um, surveys, etc. all show up. And then there are a few tools that participants can interact with. There's activity, where they can post questions or comments. There's people, where they can see who's there. Notes, where they can take notes. And save, where, you guessed it, they can save the presentation to come back later. Let's go back to content. I'll minimize that view. And back into the settings screen. If I go into activity, the first thing you'll see is I can enable or disable activity for participants. It's enabled by default. If you don't want to accept questions or comments from participants, simply turn it off. Let me show you how it works. If I turn it off now, let's bring up the participant view again. 
I'm going to refresh that screen and you'll see the bottom toolbar no longer has the activity option. Okay, back to preferences. You can also choose to keep posts private. What this means is that whenever your participants post a new comment or question, only you as the presenter will see it rather than the whole group. It's also really easy to use this to moderate the conversation because each time someone posts um, a comment and you keep it private, you have the option of individually making that particular comment or question public. Next up is the background color when you're displaying posts. You can see it's currently set to green. Let's change it to orange and I'll quickly show you how that works. I'm going to go out of settings, open up activity, and you can see I can display any question or comment that's posted on the main screen. I'll display this one and you can see the background color is now orange. Okay, back to settings, back in activity. I want to show you a quick trick. If you have your name field selected in the access section, a new option appears in the activity section below and that's that participants can post anonymously. You can now choose whether participants have to be themselves, i.e. the name they shared with you at the start of the presentation, or whether they can post anonymously. The next few sections are really straightforward, so let's run through them quickly. People. You can turn on and off the People tool. Notes. You can turn on and off the Notes tool. And Save is pretty similar. You can turn on and off the ability for participants to save the presentation and come back to it later. Finally is notifications. For those participants with a Zedings account, if you make an update such as answering a question they post or um, posting a new comment in activity, they'll be notified by email. If you simply don't want any of those emails to be sent, you can mute all notifications for your participants over here. So that is the settings screen in Zedings. We covered general, access and preferences. I hope you enjoy configuring your Zedings so that it works exactly the way you want it to. Till next time, thanks, bye.